you think the CDC and WHO knew that masks work and were trying to sort of imagine that people are kind of stupid and they would buy masks in, in, in excess if they were told that masks work? Is that like, because uh, this does seem to be a particularly clear example of mistakes made. You're asking me this question? Yeah. I'm, no, you're not. What do you think, Lex? Well, I actually probably disagree with you a little bit. Great, let's do it. <laughs> I think it's not so easy to be honest with the populace when the danger of panic is always around the corner. So mm. I, I, I think the kind of honesty you exhibit appeals to a certain class of brave intellectual minds that uh, it appeals to me, but I don't know, from the perspective of WHO, I don't know if it's so obvious that they should um, be honest 100% of the time with people. I'm not saying you should be perfectly transparent and 100% honest. I'm saying that the quality of your lies has to be very high and it has to right. be public spirited. It's, it's, There's a right, big difference right. between, so I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a child about this. Yeah. I'm not saying that when you're at war, for example, you turn over all of your plans right. to the enemy because it's important that you're transparent with 360 degree visibility, far from it. What I'm saying is something has been forgotten and I forgot who it was who told it to me, but it was a fellow graduate student in the um, Harvard math department. And he said, you know, I learned one thing being out in the workforce because he was one of the few people who had had a work life in the department. Uh, as a grad student, and he said, you can be friends with your boss, but if you're going to be friends with your boss, you have to be doing a good job at work. <laughs> and there's an analog here, which is if you're going to be reasonably honest with the population, you have to be doing a good job at work as the Surgeon General or as the head of the CDC. So if you're doing a terrible job, you're supposed to resign. And then the next person is supposed to say, look, I'm not going to lie to you. I inherited the situation. It was in a bit of disarray. Um, but I had several requirements before I agreed to step in and take the job because I needed to know I could turn it around. I needed to know that I had clear lines of authority. I needed to know that I had the resources available in order to rectify the problem. And I needed to know that I had the ability and the freedom to level with the American people directly as I saw fit. All of my wishes were granted. And that's why I'm happy here on Monday morning. Uh, I've got my sleeves rolled up. Boy, do we got a lot to do. So please come back in two weeks and then ask me how I'm doing then. And I hope to have something to show you. That's how you do it. So why is that excellence and basic competence missing? The big nap. You see, you come from multiple traditions where it was very important to remember things. Yeah. The Soviet tradition made sure that you remembered the sacrifices that came in that war. And the Jewish tradition we're doing this on Passover, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, every year we tell one simple story. Well, why can't it be different every year? Maybe we could have a rotating series of seven stories. <laughs> because it's the one story that you need. It's like, you know, you work with the men in black group, right? And it's the last suit that you'll ever need. This is the last story that you ever need. Don't think I fell for your neuralizer <laughs> last time. <laughs> in any event, we tell one story because it's the get out of Dodge story. There's a time when you need to not wait for the, the bread to rise. And that's the thing, which is even if you live through a great nap, you deserve to know what it feels like to have to leave everything that has become comfortable and, and unworkable. It's sad that you need, you need that tragedy. I imagine to uh, have the tradition of remembering it's it's sad to uh, to think that uh, because things have been nice and comfortable means that we can't have great competent leaders, which is kind of the implied statement. Like, can we have great leaders who take big risks, who are who inspire hard work, who deal with difficult truth, even though things have been comfortable? Well, we know what those people sound like. I mean, you know, if, if for example, Jocko Willink suddenly threw his hat into the ring, everyone would say, okay, right, party's over, 
<laughs> it's time to get up at 4.30 and really work hard and we've got to get back into fighting shape. And yeah, but J Jocko is a very special, I think that whole group of people by profession put themselves in the way of in, into hardship on a daily basis. And he's not, I don't, well, I don't know, but he's probably not going to be, well, could Jocko be president? <laughs> okay, but it doesn't have to be Jocko, right? Like, in other words, if it was Kai Lenny or if it was um, Alex Honnold from rock climbing. Right, but they're just serious people. They're serious people who can't afford your BS. Yeah, but why do we have serious people that do rock climbing and uh, don't have serious people who lead the nation? That, that seems because to- Because that was a, those skills needed in rock climbing are not good during the big nap. And at the tail end of the big nap, they would get you fired. But I don't, don't you think there's a, a fundamental part of human nature that desires to, to excel, to be exceptionally good at your job? Yeah, but what is your job? I mean, in other words, my, my, my point to you is, no, I, if, if, you, if you're a general in a peacetime army and your major activity is playing war games, what if the skills needed to win war games are very different than the skills needed to win wars because you know how the war games are scored and you've, you, you've done money ball, for example, with war games. And you figured out how to win games on paper. So then the, the advancement skill becomes divergent from the uh, ultimate skill that it was proxying for. Yeah, but you create, it's, we're good as human beings to, I mean, I, at least me, I can't do a big nap. So at any one moment when I finish something, a new dream pops up. So right. go, going to Mars. Going what, what, what do you like to do? You like to do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Well, first of all, I like to do everything. You like to play guitar. Guitar. You do this podcast, you yeah. do theory. You're always, you're constantly taking risks and exposing yourself, yeah. right? Why? Because you got one of those crazy, I'm sorry to say it, you got an Eastern European Jewish personality, which I'm still tied to. And I'm a couple generations more distant than you are. And I've held on to that thing because it's valuable to me. You don't think there's a huge percent of the populace, even in the United States, that's that's that. Oh. It might be a little bit dormant, but. Do you, do you know Anna Khachian uh, from the Red Scare podcast? Did you interview her? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I listened. Yeah, yeah. She was great. She was great, right? Yeah, she was fun. She's she's terrific. But she also has the same thing going on. And I, I made a joke in the liner notes for that episode, which is so, somewhere on the road from Stalingrad to Forever Twenty One, something was lost. Like, how can Stalingrad and Forever Twenty One be in the same sentence? And you know, in part, it's that weird thing. It's like trying to remember even words. Like I'm in mean, Russian and Hebrew, things like it's like what pomyat and liskor. You know, these words have much more potency about memory. And I don't know. I I do. I think I I think there's still a dormant populace that craves leaders on a small scale and large scale. And uh, I hope to be that leader on a small scale. And I think you sir, have a role to be a leader. Uh, you kids go ahead without me. I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do a little bit of weird podcasting. <laughs> See, now you're you're putting on your uh, Joe Rogan hat. Uh, he says, I'm just a comedian. Oh no, I'm you not. you say, I'm just a. No, it's not that. If I say I wanna lead too much because of the big nap, there's like a group, uh, a chorus of automated idiots. Mm -hmm. And their, their, their first thought is like, ah, I knew it. This was a power grab all along. Why should you lead? You know, just like, and so the, the idea is you're just trying to skirt around, not stepping on all of the idiot landmines. Ooh. It's like, okay. So now I'm going to hear that in my inbox for the next three days. Okay. So lead by example, just live. No, I mean, the, large the issue, platform. Look, we should take over the institutions. There are institutions. We've got bad leadership. We should mutiny and we should inject a, I don't know, 15%, 20% uh, disagreeable, dissident, very aggressive, loner individual, mutant freaks, all the people that you go to see Avengers movies about or the X-Men or whatever it is, and stop pretending that everything good comes out of some great, giant, inclusive, communal 12-hour uh, meeting. <laughs> it's like, stop it. That's not how shit happens.